give the floor straight away to Dr. Mataz for the first uh, lecture. Shukran. Bismillah rahim Anyway, uh, it was his fault, but not my fault. <laughs> so I, I was planning to, to have some rest. <laughs> so I'm still sleepy. Um, I didn't sleep well because I, I didn't sleep well. So my, my th and, and the topic today uh, is very hot. So I think so. Uh, in the beginning, of, I would like to know how many one of you do, do, you, do you think that there is a contradiction between the freedom of religion and the punishment of apostasy? Apostasy to, to not believe after you believed. To leave the Islam. A Ridda. Yes. I'm asking. Do you think that there is a contradiction between. It's not the contradiction between human yes, no. rights and uh, uh, the uh, choice to leave, but the contradiction between the freedom, <coughs> my personal freedom, and the human beings. That's the contradiction of my choice. So, the others, you don't, you don't see any contradiction between religion, religious freedom and the punishment of apostasy. No? Okay. Anyway, this is our talk today. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, okay. The, the 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 title is as you you can see now, uh, freedom of religion is killing the apostate. It's I think it's an uh, introduction to to the recogni uh, recognition of juristic uh, reasoning. So uh, the Quran clearly declares the freedom of belief as a Quranic general rule. If also, it also uh, dis dispraises, dispraises di disbelief after belief, which focus on the dangers and evil consequences of apostasy. Actually, the Quran declares no temporal punishment for an apostasy. However, the juristic statement that the punishment for apostasy is killing raised many problematic questions and controversies about the freedom of belief from one side and the relationship between the Quran and Sunnah from the other side, driving towards the reconsideration on, of the juridical, juridical of the juridical approach. In this lecture, we attempt to we attempt to address this issue in in four axes. So the concept, the first one is the concept and meanings of freedom in Islamic thought. The second one is the freedom of belief in the Quran. The third one is the punishment of apostasy in Islamic jurisprudence. And the fourth one, which is the, the last one, is juridical debates and problems. Now let's go to the first one, the first one, the first act. The freedom, concept, and meanings. The discussion about the reli religious freedom is dated back to the beginning of modern times, collateral, collateral to the widespread of modernity values based in essence on individualism and, for f and freedoms. Such notions were later turned out to become part of the general human values, raising several questions and problems in the Islamic spheres when exposed to the religious texts and Islamic jurisprudence. The Islamic tradition had not explored freedom in the, f in the modern philosophical sense in which the civil, political, and social aspects, among others, 
are closely relevant. However, the Islamic tradition reflects a number of freedom di dimensions. Freedom is used in the fiqh jurisprudence in opposition to slavery. Freedom is used in the kalam theology in contrast with fatalism within the binaries of fatalism and free will and, and human action and God's action. Freedom is also used in the Sufism. Some Sufi writers, for example, Al-Qushayri, devoted a chapter to freedom entitled a chapter on freedom. In this context, the freedom refers to the, the liberation from the submission to the creatures in pursuit of achieving the perfect worship and submission to God alone. Freedom is also used in the ethics to indicate a human virtue included in the morality of sense of honor. It refers to the value that makes a person keeps to good practices and lawful gains and found, as found in the writings of Ibn Maskawi and Al-Asfahani. Al-Raghib Al-Asfahani, I mean. Um, now, the, the concept of freedom has two meanings in Islamic thought. First, it denotes <coughs> the human liberation from slavery. Second, the human free will and free action to decide on the human personal affairs as one may like without opposition. The concept of freedom draws upon three main elements. Huh? Yeah, okay. Uh, number one, reason as the basis of imposing the religious duties. Faith and practice are con contingent on the reason. Number two, free choice. A person under, under Doris is relieved from observing religious duties because of his or her lack of free, of free valid will or free valid action. Number three, capacity and ability are necessary for effective deeds. The scholars of Usul al-Fiqh state that undertaking the religious duties must be within the human possible abilities. So, contemplating the, the basics of creeds and the details of Sharia ah, uh, unveils that they are con conditional upon these three elements. Even jihad is justified by being a means to promote the freedom of belief and prevent compulsion God, to, pre to, uh, to prevent compulsion. So, and then everyone knows that God says, Sorry? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and fight, <clears throat> God says, and fi fight them until persu persuasion is no more, and religious is for God. This is the opposite <laughs> direction. So, jihad was, sorry? Sorry? No, not yet, no, no. Jihad was thus toler tolerated in order to prevent persecution, persecution, which in this context refers to comp compelling people to follow a certain belief. This allowance was in response to a situation in which, is when, in which it was polytheists who broadly <laughs> persecuted Muslims and denied, denied them the freedom of religion by force. Some contemporary jurists even made 
freedom of religion, one of the Sharia maqasid, as al Tahir bin Ashur did. And then al Sheikh Yusuf al Qaradawi and al Sheikh Rashid al Ghanoushi followed him. In the context of modern Arab revolution, al Qaradawi and al Ghanoushi have said that freedom is one of the basic need of the basic needs of life that human life has no dignity without it. Indeed, each of the five collective needs is insepar inseparable from the freedom because the pers preservation of religion, human life, mind, children, and wealth is impossible in spheres of compulsion and enslavement. That is why the jurists used to say the lawgiver only promotes all means of freedom. This is a, a, a basic role in the Islamic jurisprudence. Lawgiver, the lawgiver only promotes all means of freedom or to freedom. Now, the second point, okay, you speak, uh, okay, the second point now is the freedom of belief in the Quran. It is no, it is not within the scope of this lecture to explore the general concept of freedom. Focus is on the religious freedom only, which is a sense draws upon the freedom of belief and the freedom of expressing this belief. In this context, we can highlight two groups of verses. The first group speaks to the freedom of religion or the freedom of belief. The second group speaks to apostasy and disbelief after belief. In respect to the first group, the Quran has several verses that affirm the freedom of religion. Some have explicit indications and others have only tacit indications. Two Quranic verses are indeed central. Number one, God says, there is no compulsion in the religion. Right-mindedness minded, has already been evidently distinct from mis uh, misguidance. Number two, God says, and if your Lord has so decided, whoever in the er uh, is in the earth would indeed have believed all of them altogether, would you then compel mankind until they are believers? Now, <clears throat> these two verses are of central paramount importance for a number of reasons. Number one, they are explicitly and directly declaring the freedom of religion. Number two, they assume a form similar to, fo to the formula of general laws, universal rules. The two verses speak of the divine law to let people live free for two res res uh, reasons. First, guidance and truth are clearly distinguished from misguidance and fleshhood, uh, falsehood. Second, God wills to entrust humankind with duties, freedom of choice and responsibility. That is why people fall into disagreement because God had not well to make them believe by force.
In respect to the second group, the Quran has several verses in which the term ridda, apostasy, has been mentioned six times. The Quran also speaks of the concept of ridda rather than the term per se of ridda in nine contexts. Is, it is noticeable that all these verses speak of only three themes, apostasy and apostas. The apostasy of a, of a believer is the desire only sought by disbelievers and disbelievers and the hypocrites together. The apostas are a limit group, a limited group in the, in the society. Apparently, the Quran speaks of them as a certain group of people. And then the destiny, the destiny, destiny, the destiny and punishment of apostates. Their deeds are void in this life and in the afterlife, and theirs are cares and in, in ter, eternal punishment in hell life, in her, hell fire, but there is no human imposed punishment specified for them. The, the third issue, addressed, addressed to the believers. God commands them, commands them to forgive and pardon after they become assured of the ardent desire of, peop of the people of the book to make them apostas, apostates. The Quran also asks the messenger to pay no concern for the attempts of the people of the book to throw doubts about the faith of the believers with final request from the believers not to obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites. So the fact that <clears throat> the Quran clearly asserts the freedom of religion as an absolute general rule and in includes no indication to any temporal punishment whatsoever for apostasy creates a real problem. Indeed, this problem was not put forth in the jurisprudential tradition for some reasons related to the, the absence of the formulation of the concept of freedom in the modern sense. This juridical deductive approach and how the jurists envisioned the relationship between the Quran and Sunnah and the way to synthesize and reconcile them are also effective in this regard. Since the punishment of the apostasy consti constitutes a barrier to the freedom of religion, we will, explore, we will explore it in some details. So now let's go to the third part of this lecture. Punishment of apostasy in Islamic jurisprudence. I will, I will uh, deal with this issue from two dimensions, the, the, the classical uh, de debates and the modern debates. So let's start with the, the apostasy from the perspective of tradition, traditional jurists. The four Sunni schools, even the eight schools of jurisprudence are in agreement that the apostate must be executed unless he resume resumes faith and denies apostasy. They cited the Quran, Sunnah, and Ijma' consensus in support of this ruling. From the Quran, some cite the Quranic verses, you will soon be called against people endowed with strict violence to fight them or they surrender. ستدعون إلى قوم أولي بأس شديد تقاتلونهم أو يسلمون. It is said that such people refer to the 
the apostates of Yamama and others. And the Prophet, from the Sunnah indications now, the Sunnah indications, the Prophet says, he who changes his religion, kill him. Reported by Al-Bukhari, which is the most authentic and strongest of indications on the punishment of apostates. The Prophet says to, it is not permissible to, sp to spill the blood of a Muslim except in three instances. One of them, the one who forsakers, forsakes his religion and separate from the community, reported by Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet also ordered the killing of Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah, Abdullah ibn Khatal, and others. Ibn Abd al-Barr, Ibn Hazm, Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, al Nawi, and Ibn Qudama reported the consensus, consensus of jurists that an apostate must be killed. It is most likely that this consensus, consensus depends upon Abu Bakr's fight against the, the apostates as well as all of the companions agreed with him. The juridical deduction induction is based upon three methodological principles. First, acting upon the prophet's accessible acceptable tradition when fulfilling the conditions set by the scholars, even if it is a salutary tradition narrated by one, only one person or a few number of persons who num who, whose number does not fulfill the standardized number of tawatur that begates certainty and decisiveness. Now, the second methodological, methodological issue is Khabar al-Ahad, the salutary, salutary report. Khabar al-Ahad is accepted, acceptable in the area of hudud, prescribed punishments, in which the blood is shed as al-Ghazali confirmed, al-Imam al-Ghazali, Abu Hamid. Number third, Khabar al-Ahad can qualify the general declarations of the Quran. This is that certain Quranic principles can be qualified by such account. This one of basic bases upon which jurists of this, pers of this persuasion, persuasion maintain that the prophetic reports on the killing of apostates is sanctioned, sanctioned, sanctioned within the Quranic general declaration. There is no compulsion in the religion, as well as other general verses that assert the freedom of belief. The apostate will thus forms an exception to the general verses. In the light of this legal system's principles and in, in, instances, the punishment of executing the, the apostate seems to be constant and fixed without the lead difference, without the least difference. However, delving into the details of the issue unveils huge differences in the, phrase, in the phases of building the legal ruling and the process of citing the above mentioned texts and others in its support. Let's start with the claim of Ijma. This in-depth contemplation of the, the wars of apostasy in the time of Abu Bakr in the light of the details record, recorded by Imam al-Tabari in his chron, chron, uh, chroni, uh, 
Chronicles asserts that it was not an ordinary apostasy to be cited in the particular legal context as a proof for the ijma' held in support of killing the apostates. The event of Ridda apostasy <coughs> was actually an insur insurrection and aggressive dis dissension against the caliph in hostile rebellion that in, uh, endangered the unity of the established, the established civil state after the death of its leader, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Reflecting on the viewpoints of the, the sexers unveils that there are two leading successors who men, maintained who maintain that an apostate should not be killed. They are Ibrahim al nakhai the leading jurist of Iraq, and Sufyan al thawri the famous leading authority in fiqh and hadith. This view is also attributed to Umar ibn al-Khattab and Umar ibn al-Abd Abd al aziz It seems that this latter opinion survived until late times that we found Imam Ibn Hazm devoting a considerable section of, this, of his book Al-Muhalla to argue against this view. In other words, it was a significant viewpoint worthy of this careful attention. Now let's go to the remarks on the Quranic indications. In the context of Ridda punishment, the Quranic indications are not of great significance for some reasons. First, there is no indication what, what, whatsoever to any, significant, uh, uh, to any punishment for the apostate in the Quran. It is thus natural not to cite it in arguments supporting the punishment. Second, citing the Quran in respect of the legal details is not conclusive in juristic debates because the Quran is not essentially concerned with the par partial par particulars of laws. Indeed, citing the Quran in, in support of the Ridda punishment was first invoked by Imam al-Shafi'i in several contexts of his book, Al-Um. However, his citations are not dis decisive and lack relevance to the essence of this problematic issue. Imam al-Tabari also asserted that the verse, there is no compulsion in, re in the religion, was qualified by the prophetic tradition on the killing of apostate, apostates and that compulsion is, is impermissible before accepting Islam. But the case is different if a person wants to leave it. Again, the relationship between the Quran and Sunnah is raised as would be later, later discussed or later discussed. Some contemp <coughs> contemporary scholars cited the Quran, Quranic verses, you will soon be called against a people endowed with strict violence to fight them or they surrender. Ibn Kathir mentioned a number of problem <coughs> interpretations for this verse. It is said that the, pro the people is in question refer to the people of Hawazin, Faqif, or Banu Hanifa, tribal, tribes, or to the Persians, or to the Romans. For Ata ibn Abi Layla, Al Hassan al Basri, and Qatada, they are the Persians and the Romans. Mujahid mentioned that they are the pagans. With an yun. All of these speculative, speculative opinions are not clear or decisive 
in support of the temporal punishment of Frida. Now let's go to the remarks of Sunnah in this issue. In respect to <coughs> the cited prophetic, cited prophetic traditions, the prophet never killed anyone because of apostasy. Examining all of the examples they cited in this regard reveals that their, <coughs> their narrations and accounts spoke of people who dissented, dissented and joined the disbelievers after apostasy at times of war between two distinct camps, the camp of belief and the camp of disbelief. Reviewing the real events and the cited incidents of the Prophet's biography makes it plain that the Prophet's statements, the one who forsakes his religion and separates from the community, forms a compound synchronic description. During the lifetime of the Prophet, anyone who changed his religion would join the disbeliever hostile community. Evidently, all the inc incidents of apostasy occurred before the, believe, uh, the, the liberation of Mecca. Here, the narration, the narration of Aisha is of special significance. Aisha said, or a man who abandons Islam and fight against Allah and his messenger in which case he should be either killed, crucified, or exiled, reported by Abu Dawood and the Nasai. <clears throat> there remains the Prophet's statement, he who, he who changed his religion, kill him. Some contempor <coughs> contempor contemporaries who are not specialized scholars attempted to deny it on the ground that it's not authentic. Actually, it is an authentic narration reported by al-Bukhari, but citing it in support of this punishment is debated, debated as would be clarified. Three critical points are raised about this statement. First, <coughs> is the conditional noun, men, men baddaladinahu, he, who, <coughs> equally applied to males and females? <coughs> For the Hanafi jurists, the woman is not included and should not be killed. So you are on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> they argue that the conditional noun, okay. <clears throat> they argue that the conditional noun men does not include females and accidentally cite and accidentally cite the prophet's pros <clears throat> prescription of killing women at times of war. Second. Does his saying, Dinahu, his religion, <clears throat> apply to changing any religion? From Imam Malik, only the one who abandons the religion Islam openly is intended, is intended. Some Shafi'is jurists understood the Prophet's statement, he who changes his religion to mean anyone who leaves a religion to another, whether she or he is of those who submit to the jizya or not. This is also one of two statements attributed to a Shafi'i and the narration from Ahmed ibn Hanbal. As to the, <clears throat> as to the other narration from Ahmed ibn Hanbal, if a disbeliever leaves his or her religion to a better religion, 
his or her change is acceptable, accepted, but if she or he converts to an inferior religion, it, it, should, it should not be approved. For example, Judaism and Christianity are equal, but Mechanism is inferior to them both. Majusia is inferior to them both. <coughs> the Hanafi jurists held the view that all false beliefs, all false beliefs, take the same rule. The change, indeed. <clears throat> the change intended in the hadith is only indicating the abandonment of Islam. Given, <clears throat> given these strong differences, they are all in agreement that the, lit the, literal, the literal meaning is not legally intended. So anyone who changes his religion and converts to Islam is not included in the hadith, although the literal wording is, ge in gen is general and include him. Third, does his saying, فقتلو, kill him, entail direct killing before istitaba, requesting someone to repent from his her sin or crime? Is it necessary to observe istitaba? Indeed, there is a, a, lengthy, a, a lengthy difference on this point. Some jurists give only three days allowance for Stitaba when others specified fewer or more days. Some even maintained that Stitaba should continue even to the last of his or her life. And now we said they disputed the ruling of Istitaba, whether it is obligatory or just recommended. They also disputed its period and concept, uh, exception, acceptance. In the light of this debate, it is evident that the judgment of killing the apostate is deeply contra controversial. controversial. Differences exist about killing him or her about the proper understanding of the relevant indication upon which the judgment draws, about the way of deducing de <coughs> the judgment and about the specific person intended as the Hanafi, Hanafis limited it in practice to men only, whereas the majority apply it equally to men and women. Eventually, differences also arise about the istitaba. The istitaba, it is allowed period, allowed period, <coughs> and acceptance, and acceptance. The basic, <coughs> the basics about which the differences stand are. Number one, differences regarding the semantics of the wording used. For example, the conditional noun, men. Number two, differences regarding the indications, the indication of the effective reason underlying the, 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 the judgment as seen in the review of the instance of Rida. As the judgment was not based on plain and decisive evidence, differences took place, and the area is still open for fresh ishtihad. Let, al let alone the fact that the narrations cited in this issue are all speculative in terms of their chains of transmission, documentations, and meanings. As seen, it is, <coughs> it is agreed upon, upon that the main narr narration on the issue is not literally applied and should be broadly interpreted. The, argu the argument of this paper that interpretation 
is very wide indeed. Now let's go to the next point. <clears throat> reconsideration the ap of apostasy in modern times. But for the, con <clears throat> for the contact with the Western thought and the principles of the, fr the French evolution, revolution and secularism and modern concept of conception of freedom, the reconsideration of the punishment of apostasy would not have been invoked. The Reformation approach of Muhammad Abdu paid due attention to the reconsideration of the ruling in a question by virtue of uh, con contempla contemplating the relevant texts and arguments. For Abdu, <coughs> the word ad din in the general sense refers to the belief in Allah and in the last day as well as doing of good deeds. And then the apostasy is comp comp comprised of these three elements. Abdul Aziz al Jawish <coughs> followed Muhammad Abdu in this opinion, sta stating that apostasy is to abstain, abstain from supporting Islam and Muslims and to refuse the fight the enemies and abandon jihad. Sheikh Muhammad <coughs> Shaltu did not give a strict view about, about the, the apostate and was he facilitated saying the consideration of this question may change if it is noticed that many scholars maintain that <coughs> the pres prescribed pe penalties are not established by the salutary reports. reports. Actually, the mere disbelief is not an enough ground to violate the san sanctity of blood. Only aggressive, aggressive fighting attacks against Muslims and persecuting them in an, in, in an attempt to make them abandon their religion form an enough ground. The explicit declarations of the Quran in many verses deny any compulsion of religion. By the late decades, the, debates <coughs> the debate was refreshed again in the heated discussions on human rights and laws, especially when some indicates <coughs> some incidents of apostasy took place in Egypt and other countries. Fatawa were soon issued. In their pursuit to prove that Islam is in conform conformity with the freedom of belief and the human rights, some lawyers and writers in Syria and Egypt declared that an apostate should not be killed and the freedom of belief must be asserted. In contrast to this, some scholars saw it an unjustified often offense to, to raise conflict between the killing of the apostate and the freedom of religion. Endeavors were aren'tly devoted to justify the killing of the apostates Indeed, the all jurists have two foundations for this question. First, the majority believe that the reason for killing the apostate is mere disbelief after accepting Islam. Second, the Hanafi scholars maintain that killing is confi confined to men only, not women. For them, the reason for killing the apostate is Harbiya, fears that he may join to hostile enemies in the land of war and fight against Muslims. Actually, <coughs> women do not fight in wars. So they are in the history, we are talking about the history. <laughs> so, 
So they are excluded from killing if they apostatize. The contemporary scholars accepted this ruling in principle and endeavored to justify, to justify it in line with the modern ideas. For some of them, the apostasy is equivalent to the manner of Hiraba, armed robbery, robbery and terror, terrorizing the peaceful people. In other words, forsaking Islam openly and promoting anti-Islamic ideas in, pers in persistence is decisively and conclus conclusively very similar <coughs> in essence to Hiraba. This is a way of plotting against Islam and Muslims by imparting, by imparting the seeds of misguidance and doubts about Muslims about Muslim beliefs and Islamic principles. Advocates of this view include Dr. Muhammad Saeed al Muti and others. Some others held that held the view that apostasy apostasy is worse than Hiraba, as it is a form of repelling and resur resurrection 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 against the Muslim state. It is equal to high treason against the nation by attacking the social and political order of the state and those in charge of Islam. The basic foundation of this view, postulates, 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 I think. <laughs> <laughs> that apostasy in essence means the change of loyalty and affiliation from Islam to its enemies. As Sayyid Qutb and Al Sheikh Muhammad Al Ghazali viewed, Al Qaradawi argues that apostasy is a change of loyalty and alteration of identity and redirection of affiliation. The apostate turns this loyalty and affiliation from a nation to another, from a homeland to another, namely from the Muslim land to another land. Dr. Salim Al-Awwa argues that this penalty is disc discretion discretionary and the com competent authorities in the Muslim state should be entrusted with this decision on the, the appropriate punishment. They are not to blame if they decide to execute the, the apostate. According to this view, the Prophet's statement, kill him, indicates permission, not obligation. Evidently, several interpretations are suggested from apostasy. Some reconsider the ruling with focus on in reinterpreti reinterpreting the concept of apostasy while admitting the prescribed punishment and presenting some modern justifications for it to seem plausible and harmonious with the modern day thought. However, we all acknowledge, I'm not sure, <laughs> that the law of killing, of killing the apostate is somewhat problematic in modern times in the light of the dominance of the values of freedom, of the freedom of belief and the general freedom of religion. Now let's go to the fourth point, which is the last point. Juridical debates and problems. The interpretations presented are, by, by and large, exposed to some serious critique. Indeed, the problem arising from the con contradiction between the freedom of belief and the killing of the apostate cannot be resolved by broadening, broadening the concept of religion 
to include belief in Allah and in the last day as well as <coughs> going uh, as well as doing of good deeds as Muhammad Abdu suggested nor by restructuring the concept of inc to include the support of Islam and Muslims as Jawish did. Likewise, the juristic ruling cannot be rationalized and modernized by introducing some modern reasons for it, regardless of except exploring the relevant questions that f form its legal system. Taking it for granted that the effective reason of, for killing the, the apostate is the high treason or the change of loyalty and alter alteration of identity from Islam to another belief, this kind of argument is only composed for the ruling to seem acceptable, but it exposes us to real problems when applied, for instance, to the European context. If the loyalty and identity are only based on religion, how would be the case of Western Muslims who live in the Western countries and have their nationalities? Would the same idea of loyalty, identity, and treason apply to them due to their mere affiliation to another religion? This kind of arguments entails equally between a person who converts to Islam and forsakes, forsakes it with the one who has not accepted Islam. In this case, the meaning of compu compulsion materi materialize, materializes in coming and in living the religion, since the issue would be based upon loyalty and Betrayal, betrayal, which in turn hinders our way to the religion, the religious diversity and pluralism that never ceased in the Muslim community throughout history. <clears throat> Given the view that the open adoption and promotion of apostasy is a sort of hiraba and rebellion against the social fiber this kind of arguments considers all calls as forms of hiraba and thus endanger the future of Islam call, Islamic call itself because no plausible justification to make it an exception in the, in the sight of the others if they treat all calls as equal. These arguments presume that the human community is only based upon religion. Indeed, these arguments or justifications are presented for a former ruling which sets us in critical situations inside our religiously diverse communities and outside them in the West, a fact totally out of the awareness of the advocates of these arguments. Renewing the methodology makes it man mandatory, man mandatory to take the certainty and dominance of the Quran over the past scripture and the Sunnah as a starting point. <clears throat> More studies and examinations are necessary to de determine the relationship between the Quran and the Sunnah. It is also indispensable, indispensable to re rehabilitate, to rehabilitate the methodology of maqasid and the universal, the uni universal principles. The freedom as one of the Sharia ah maqasid is a basis for understanding other indications, not the opposite. It is necessary to introduce an interpretation 
in harmony with all different narrations of the <coughs> same hadith or other prophetic hadiths and indicates with careful consideration of their historical contexts to avoid misunderstanding and misapplication such as taking the relative as absolute or the historical as constantly effective. This kind of understanding should be judged in the light of the Sharia universal principles to give rise to a well order, or, orderly consistent system form because revelation is absolutely free from contra, con, contraries, contraries and differences. In conclusion, reconsidering the punishment of apostasy raises the significance methodology, methodolog methodologically of returning to the specifics of the legal cases involved, re-examining operational legal principle enforced in the juristic process in a given case. Div divergence or argument in the practice of juristic deduction and other relationship between Quran and Sunnah in the ways that they are evoked by jurists in each case. Thus, as always, historical context matters as do the, f the specifiers of the law and details of the legal cases themselves. Thank you. So we have 25 minutes, and we will start straight away. Mike. Uh, could you please switch to the previous uh, slide? Um, there is the statement that uh, for the uh, modern uh, uh, methodology, this, uh, no, 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 the, yes, this one, uh, the uh, centrality and dominance of the Quran over the past scripture and the Sunnah is given. What is the past scripture? Al Quran, as uh, as Muhammad, the uh, domin dominance uh, on all holy texts, holy texts that uh, came before, or that revealed before, like Torah or or the Bible, for example. Because Quran talks about its his its his self as a dominant text on all past texts before revealed, like. Torah and Injil, like Bible. No, um, it's in general methodology. It, it's not related to the, the apostasy now here. I'm talking about the general methodology. It's, it's my turn. <laughs> yes, uh, we should start from here and go up. <laughs> well, um, thank you very, good, very much for this uh, good presentation again. I have a, a um, there are two hadiths which uh, the first one is uh, uh, in al-Bukhari man baddala deenahu faqtuluh I don't know, know if uh, and the second one Sheikh uh, Shawqi uh, maybe help me translate la yahallu dam al-amri muslimin yashhadu anna la ilaha illa Allah yes uh, you mentioned it. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know. These, these are uh, what I'm coming to here. The question is about the mutable and immutable, and how, uh, because I have been asked this question myself at the university, and um, and I am not the one who should be answering these questions, because some people think that this is a certain situation where the prophet, uh, as you said, it was a halat harab, it was the people that, uh, 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 because of war times, uh, 
that uh, people may, may go to the other part and the other part will be more in numbers uh, and uh, the, the, the Muslims will be less in number. It was more a ca may, maybe a context-based uh, thing than that today we have many people live in Islam and going to. And the second question is, what is Ridda? Is it Ridda bil Afaal, Aqwal, or bil Atiqad, or bil Sab? Because there are different kind of Ridda. Is it Ridda when you just change your religion, or is just Ridda because you you leave Muslims and you don't practice? And I think it's maybe good to clarify more than. Regarding the first, the first question, I think I explained uh, my, my, my view here uh, to about these two uh, prophetic hadith reports. So, and the say about the second question, for the second question, I think you're pushing, here, you're pushing me here to talk about the concept of Ridda. So, I'm not talking about the Ridda itself, so because uh, uh, I don't want to talk about the Ridda now because uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to question the, the, sis, the juridical system itself and, uh, is, uh, and the relationship, uh, is there any contradiction between the apostasy, the punishment of apostasy and the freedom of uh, religion? So, and this is what I'm trying to do here. So if you, you would like to go in, in depth with the, juridi the ju ju juridical discussion about the Ridda, Ridda al -fa'al, how how do the, the how do you f define the rid the concept of ridda by expressing or by action acting or by so anyway the the, the jurists that um, say uh, that they believe that there is a, a punishment of apostasy okay they 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 talk about the punishment in any level of ridda as it's announced in the action or the in the the expressing so there's no any difference between them in their opinion in their fatawa so but if you stayed at your home and then you did ridda you you left the islam okay you are free so as soon as you declare or you announce that you are murtad you you left the islam and you believe that it's not true anymore, okay, that's, in that case, okay, you are mortal, and then you, you should be punished, in their opinion. <laughs> so this is, this is the, the case, I think. Shukran, just one quick comment. Uh, I forgot to thank Dr. Mataz uh, for his uh, great lecture, and I think uh, what I got from the lecture that it's uh, very important to have a critical methodological approach to the questions and not, and, and Dr. Matez, of course, he's approaching the question from the juristical and the usuli point of view, which he, he, is his field and this is something that, that is important because the problem is that often those questions are approached by people who are not from, it, from within the field. So uh, actually this gave more arguments of those who are just defending the traditional thought to, to, to reinforce their opinions because the other side is just coming without methodological analysis and, and basis. So this is why this study is very uh, important and it gives the, the tools of having an argument in front of those who are defending just uh, um, the, the traditional uh, way of uh, uh, thought. So uh, thank you, for, uh, Dr. Matez. So uh, Dr. Shakriti. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you very much for a very comprehensive and well-structured lecture on this very important issue. I uh, just have very, some short comments. Uh, number one is, I think, of course, the Ridda, to me, is just, unfortunately, some uh, low-level inquisition that it's going on through, throughout centuries in Islamic history, and it's time to recognize that and get rid of this. It's really... Uh, 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 but how to do that with all of this intellectual bagage that we have on our shoulders? 
<coughs> that's a real challenge. And uh, uh, two points I think are important. One is the more emphasis on the inconsistencies, not only moral inconsistencies, but also logical inconsistencies, because they will tell you, okay, you are free not to be a Muslim, but since you become Muslim, khalas, you cannot leave. So there is logical self-contradiction here, number one. And also moral inconsistency when you deal with different situation, different case, or when you ask others to provide freedom of, of, uh, of belief to Muslims and you don't provide it to those who don't want to be Muslims anymore. The, the second point was, is that uh, this kind of punishment is just, you create a society of hypocrites. So coercion at the end produce a community of hypocrisy, not community of true and sincere belief. True belief has to come from the heart. Uh, if not, I, I, that's not belief. I mean, I can say, yeah, okay, I, I, will be, I will be back to Islam so to avoid to become, that's not really Islam. That's not the Islam accepted by, by God. Uh, to, to Allah I belong the pure religion, din al-khalas, something that comes with full uh, sincerity. Uh, very important point about the, the, uh, the uh, dominance of Quran also is very, is the key actually. Uh, Quran as a final answer. If you have the answer in Quran, you don't have to bother yourself with all of these uh, details. Uh, and uh, that's the methodology, you know, in the famous hadith of Mu'ad. So with all of the debate about, about the authenticity of the hadith itself. But it's a, I, will, I will look in the book of Allah. If, I've, if I don't find, I will look in the sunnah of the Prophet. So w whether this hadith is authentic or not, of course, this is a difference between specialists in hadith science. But... It's uh, what he's really is setting the ground for true methodology. If I have final answer in Quran, why should I bother myself on uh, hadith ahad that is debatable uh, and uh, significance and different opinions, etc. The centrality of Quran is something missing, uh, still missing in Islamic culture today. And finally, the need to rewriting the collections of ahadith and sunnah uh, with more rigid uh, criticism. It's time for Muslims really to rewrite uh, sunnah again based on a new methodology. Uh, uh, since the time of Bukhari, more than 1,000 years, uh, Muslims, it's time for them to, to think about uh, at, at least modifying the the methodology. They need to have minimum self-confidence to, to rethink the, those rules pro, uh, proposed by Bukhari and others. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Shankriti, for this, uh, good comments, these co good comments. And then uh, I agree with you that it should be the, 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 the basic, the basic uh, element of the methodology is a co a consistency in, in more two levels or senses that he mentioned. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, it's the basic element of the methodology. So if you don't have consi consi consistency, so you don't have methodology. It should be v valid to apply for all the, the, the topics or the matters that you are working on in, in this field that you, are, you have this methodology f to apply f with or for, uh, and for the consi consistency in the, 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 the internal discourse itself, and the consistency in the relation between your resources and your results or consequences. So, it's, it's comprehensive. Th this is a part of the methodology. This is what, what does that mean? What, what methodology means? So, and this is f for the first point. And the second point, 
Um, yeah, I, I, uh, maybe I didn't mention, I didn't uh, talk enough about the uh, uh, hypocrites uh, because it was a part of the p politics, in my opinion. It was not a part of, because the religion of Islam, the Islam didn't come to, to, cl to, cl to make uh, the ground clear for, from every beliefs except Islam. No. Yeah, ground zero. So, but the, he he was fighting with them to establish the the, the new da'wah, the new uh, uh, religion, and to the new system. So there was no ability uh, uh, to 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 uh, to to stay together because it it was necessary. Necessary. It was going to 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 the clash at the end. So. It was not a part of the religious action or, or activity, but it was a part of the politics at that, at that time. And this is why, okay, أخرجوا, لا يبقى في جزيرة العرب دينان. Okay, it was a part of politics. It was not a part. Okay, جزيرة العرب, why جزيرة العرب? Why the, how can I translate جزيرة <laughs> العرب? The, 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 the Arabic, yes. So, uh, it's a politics. It's a politics. It's not. But okay. What about the uh, those people who are out, who were out of the Al Jazeera Al Arab? So he was. His mission or function was not to clean the ground from any belie any other beliefs. So this is the issue, I think. So it's a, it should be. It should. We should uh, consider that that issue or tackle that issue from the historical context and uh, and then and and we have to to take in consideration that the revel revelation uh, was governed to the developing during the history even the the Quran text I mean I'm not saying that it was it's historical of course but not in the meaning that okay it's not valid anymore no it's not that I mean the context, we have a specific beginning of the text, and we have a specific end of the text. So, and then it started at some point and it ended at some point. So, and then between two points, the beginning point and the, the ended point, okay, there was a lot of develop, developing in the societies and in the revelation itself. And this is why Okay, I, I, I don't want to, to discuss the, the Nasikh here, but uh, I have a different opinion about Nasikh, so I'm, I'm not going to discuss that now. But it's a part of developing during the history. So our mission that now, which is a very important mission, that to methodologically, to, to have to build the methodology can help us to differentiate between the, the absolute and the historical meanings and rulings and texts. Now, all of us, all of Muslims, um, most of Muslims around the world, they believe that there is no salvation, there is no any more salvation. But it's written in the Quran. And it's, it was acceptable. Slavery. Slavery. Yes. Slavery, I mean, sorry. Uh, 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 it's written in the Quran. It's still written and we're still reading. We are still reading that. And it's still existing in, in the ju uh, Islamic jurisprudence. So, but because we don't have any choice now to accept or reject. So the history forced us to believe that there is no slavery anymore. So what, if, what about the other issues that we didn't learn from the history yet? We haven't learned from the history yet. So we believed that there's no slavery anymore because, alas, it finished. It ended. The, the human thought ended to the, the idea, or it became that the free freedom from slavery. Freedom from slavery, the opposite of slavery now, the, in the, this sense, uh, uh, became a, a, a universal value. So nobody accepts that. But maybe we have another ruling, other rulings that we have to 
deal with it as we don't have cho we, uh, we have choice but as the, the, ma the matters or the topics that we believe because we w we were we had no choice so this is the very important I think yeah that's it uh, as uh, can you please go back one slide And if you can please uh, explain to me more of it, uh, um, I'm sorry, explain uh, more the uh, third point. Yeah, on the jury securing cannot be rationalized. Yeah, last one. Thanks. For the last point, yeah, because I think if you have, over, if you already have uh, uh, a rule that set at some point in the history and then you're trying to defend that rule and to to protect the the authentic authenticity of that rule so you are you are not you you're not you you're not okay it's not reasonable you you can't make it reasonable to give it some interpretations or modern causes or modern uh, justifications to be modern because it's not valid anymore so this is what happened with the the reinterpretation the 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 punishment of apostasy as this uh, the, the, as we 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 have known now w with uh, Sheikh Qaradawi and Rashid Ghanoushi and uh, Sheikh Muhammad Saeed al Buti and others so they were trying to to modernize the precedent ruling, which is not logic, logic, logical. So, so you can't make the consistency by putting a new, inter, a new justifications with something is not logical. So this is what I, I meant. I don't know if I explained that well now. Uh, thanks for the presentation, uh, Dr. Martez. So my question is related to the, uh, uh, the Hanafi school. So we said that for them, the, uh, the old school, so you said that the, uh, the, uh, the death penalty is only valid when we are in uh, Dar, of, uh, Dar al Harb, when we are in, in, in war, right? And uh, to prevent the, uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, collaboration. So if, if someone, is for example uh, uh, denies the Islam's and then go to the other side so to prevent the, uh, the, the is it is it what you are mean I mean this is what they are uh, the sense of uh, of the debt so is it to prevent collaborations you 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 understand my question so no, no, to, no, to collaborate no, so 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 to, to go to the enemy and then try to fight from the from the other side Uh, I can see that in the written juridical text in Hanafi Madhab, Hanafi school, so, but I, I, they said clearly that uh, the illa, the, the cause of the, 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 this punishment was hiraba, uh, harbiya, not hiraba. Ha, there's, there's, a, there's a difference between hiraba and harbiya. Harbiya means that you have the ability of fighting and hiraba it's something different. Yeah. So, uh, uh, harbiya that you have the ability uh, to fight and to be a part of the war. Yes, yes, highway robbers. Yeah. So, so there's there's a difference between two these two concepts. So. Hanafi school or Hanafi madhab said that the, the cause of the, the punishment of the, the apostasy is harbiya, is that you have the ability to be a part of the war and to fight the Muslims. So it's, it's not an individual, an individual, in this, now, now I'm explaining, they didn't say that clearly. It's not an individual action in this sense. 
So it's, it's, uh, it's more than an, an individual action. So it's, uh, the, I think it's not, a, it's not that. So it's something uh, related to the community, to collective, collectivation, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Assalamu alaikum. I think uh, this is a very important topic, and I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Mateza for the presentation. Because in the context of uh, today's world, uh, we see that in many Muslim majority countries, young people are being deviated away from Islam. Young Muslim people are being deviated from Islam through a number of means, like uh, debates in, on the internet or, or things like that. Uh, but um, there is an objective, one of the objectives of Sharia is the preservation of religion, Hafzuddin. So how can we uh, give importance or priority to safeguard uh, Hafzuddin, okay, in, in today's context? Uh, in a question like, for example, missionary work done in, in Muslim majority countries. If uh, this is permissible, in Islam, or is it not permissible? In the context of today, missionary work, yani, il, il of, of, of different religions. Yani, uh, yani we see now in some uh, Muslim majority countries, Bibles being uh, distributed freely to uh, in public and and things like that. So, I know th this example is, in a way, my my personal understanding is that there is a, an element of a de deterrent in this ruling of, uh, of, uh, of uh, apostates. Can I just finish? Uh, there is a deterrent uh, uh, element there. And also the element of uh, maybe said the zara'a, that it's, it's meant to be a bit harsh, so people don't go that way. Uh, Muslims don't go that way. So how do you balance these, these sort of three uh, different areas or uh, thoughts in the, in the context of today? Yes, said the zara'a, and, and it being a deterrent, yani it's not because the, the, and I personally believe that this ruling is, is, is not applicable today. Yani, uh, killing apostates is, is, not, is not applicable in, in the modern world. Okay. But at the same time, yani we want to preserve religion as an objective of Sharia, and we want to preserve our uh, Muslim youth from not going astray by sort of uh, missionary tricks and things like that. So how can we uh, think of something uh, comprehensive to, to deal with this problem. Thank you. Um, can I ask you a question? That uh, uh, Do you think that if uh, the, um, killing the, the apostate is a, is a kind of way to reserve, preserve your religion? I think this, not, not, not for me, but from, from some of the traditional general, scholars, yeah, some general, of the old, yeah. old uh, schools. Is it the, the, the best way that you, we can preserve the, the religion? Not today. Or is it one of many ways that we can preserve? Not today. Yes. Because they killed the, the apostates? La, they, they, they consider this as something uh, inhumane. inhumane. Ah, it's problematic. So, uh, I think it's, it's, it's an important question to think in, the op in, in, in contrast with talking about the, the punishment of apostate to think about the preservation of the religion because it's one of the five maqasid uh, in the sharia, the, the higher objective of sharia. Hifdu uh, din, preserving, preservation the religion or Islam. So what can I say here that Hifdu din, preserv preservation Islam cannot be exist without freedom. And this is what we we saw or we understood from the Quran. So this is the first step of preserving the religion because we don't need munafiqeen. 
or, and we don't need uh, uh, any, um, any uh, compulsion to, to, uh, in the religion because you can't. You can control the, the actions, but you can't control, you cannot control beliefs, what in the, the hearts of people. So this is something is, in, uh, is basic here. This is the first issue, I think. The second issue that, okay, when we are talking about that the, there is no punishment for apostate or apostasy, it doesn't mean that we have to keep silent and just look what hap what's happening around the world. So we have to think in an in institutional way about preserve, preservation, the, preservation the religion, but okay, we have too many different ways now, and this is, and even though now we, w Islam, and, and there's, a, 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 there's a, the a theological belief in this sense that Allah have al deen so we're, don't kill yourself, don't kill yourself to be sad that because they didn't believe or at the same if the opposite said that the opposite side that if they left the religion so but as a belief as as uh, uh, um, um, as in the, th the theoretical uh, thinking theoretical level but at the same time you we have to think as khulafa fil ard as he said as a khulafa fil ard we have to think about the institutionalizing the situation of preserving or to apply this maqsad this uh, uh, higher objective of the religion in a modern way so this is the 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 the, the, the modern question i think but killing the murta the apostate is not any is not a way of preserving the religion but in the opposite side it's a part of the damaging the religion because they will play and then they will uh, manipulate the religion and they, w they can uh, and it will be a part I agree that it will be a part of the, the uh, a part of uh, pushing people to apostate to apostatize yeah from the religion so yeah thank you very much Victor Matez so we'll leave it here because you are out of time actually we uh, we are 10 minutes late because we started later so uh, we will come back again in 10 minutes sharp uh, with uh, the lecture.